Hey there, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial, we're gonna be having a look at a few different ways in which we can troubleshoot export problems. Now, these things can pop up uh, whether you're a brand new to Final Cut Pro 10 or whether you're a kind of seasoned editor, and we're gonna run through some of the few different ways in which I begin to troubleshoot uh, export problems, and also some of the common problems that come up uh, in questions that I get asked. Now, uh, the community here on YouTube is super important, so if you do have different ways in which you've had export problems and managed to resolve them, then please do leave them below um, in the comments. Um, this video is sponsored by FX Factory, um, which is an awesome uh, resource, a community of plugin makers um, that you can find online. So do go and check them out. Um, but without further ado, let's dive in and have a look at some of the common ways in which we can troubleshoot export problems from Final Cut Pro 10. So here in Final Cut Pro, we're going to step through some of the reasons you might be having trouble exporting out from Final Cut Pro. And also we'll talk about some of the ways to remedy more complex problems, um, such as glitches on the export and that type of thing. So the first Kind of number one reason um, for not being able to export out your timeline um, in Final Cut Pro is because we don't have it selected. So if we have a clip in our browser up here on the top left selected and we go to file and share up here and I'm always normally exporting out a master file then when we export out if we just do a quick scrub across here you'll see that basically we're only exporting out that clip that we have selected in the browser. So if I cancel that, I need to always make sure that I have something active on my main timeline um, so that when I'm exporting out and sharing either from file and share or from the share button up at the top right, um, that I have that whole sequence selected. So now you'll see as I kind of scrub through this, we can see not only that we have all the footage in there uh, that we have in our timeline, but we also have the kind of duration here as well of one minute, zero seconds and 15 frames. So this is definitely something to check uh, the duration of your export. If you know how long your edit is, then uh, that will kind of be a good place to check. And then we can go to next and decide we want to share it and away we go. The exporting out from the browser um, can be useful. So if I highlight multiple clips in here and go to share and master file, it's actually going to allow me to share all those clips from my browser one at a time. So if I go to settings, uh, computer, I can actually down sample multiple clips uh, right from within Final Cut Pro. So if we select a lower resolution or want to save out for a specific format. So at the moment I have computer and faster encode selected. But if I jump to video and audio, then it's going to export out QuickTime files for each of these files rather than the MPEG-4 file that you would get from computer. So we can export out multiple files all in one go. Not necessarily an export problem, um, but it's also a useful tool in Final Cut Pro as we're kind of mentioning the selecting of clips up in the browser. Now coming back to export issues, one thing I like to do is often compound my clips. So for instance, I've got uh, some clips on my timeline here and I'm going to zoom in a little bit and you can see that this one has a slightly different icon. It's a compound clip, which is basically a group of multiple clips on my timeline um, that I've grouped together to kind of make my edit um, a bit easier to kind of manage. So you can see if I grab a couple of clips here, I'll just drag that up there and crop this from the right. We'll just bring our playhead over this clip so we can see it. So you can see when I crop that from the right, I basically now have a bit of a, a split screen and sometimes if I'm setting something like this up, I'll select both those and go to file, new and compound clip and it will wrap that split screen up into one thing. There's different reasons for doing that. One of them is that once those are wrapped up into a compound clip, I can add things like cross dissolves um, onto my edit points and stuff like that. So we'll ripple trim this so it makes that cross dissolve, but you can now see I'm ripple trimming between a single clip and a split screen um, because I've dropped those into a compound clip. So there are uses for the compound clip, but if we are happy with our clicks and we kind of double click a lot, then we might end up in a compound clip, which means uh, two things. Um, one, we can modify the clips within our compound clip. So here you can see I've got multiple layers in my clip with some different kind of levels of cropping. I can modify that. I could add color correction. I could add different elements into here. So if I wanted to, for instance, do control and T and add some text that ran across this whole compound clip. Let's just type something in here. 
quickly. So we've got uh, text in a compound clip and we may want to do that so that it's kind of all wrapped up um, in that one kind of compound clip within our timeline. But when we're in that compound clip, if we go to file and share, we can share this, but it's only going to export out again that compound clip that we're within. So even though we are in our timeline, um, because we've double clicked and gone into that compound clip, we're unable to export out and we can see that our duration here is only 10 seconds. So again, another good moment to kind of just have a peek at uh, the duration of your clip that you're exporting. So we'll cancel out of that. We don't need to export this out. And this is a, a place that often people will get to if they are new to Final Cut Pro or they're editing someone else's edit and those things have been grouped into compound clips uh, and so on and so forth. So using this back arrow is basically the way that we can get in and out of the compound clip and it'll take us back to the main storyline or back into the compound clip. We can also, uh, if we are in a compound clip, which we are here, we can double click again on the main edit and it will bring up that main edit again. So if you're really looking to export out your edit, um, then you can double click on it to export it out, um, bring it up in the timeline, or if we are in a compound clip here, okay, you can see that if I select my edit up here, just like we selected one of the clips, and I go to share a master file, then I'm again exporting out my whole sequence as well. So one way to make sure that you're exporting out everything uh, on your timeline is to select the project up in your browser. So then you know there's no kind of mistake about which edit you're selecting, uh, especially if you've got different versions of your edit and you can't quickly kind of see which one is which on the timeline. We can see the name of our edit here as well. So we can see that we're in Mexico edit clip and clip is kind of the hint here that it's a compound clip and it's only 10 seconds long. So if I come back here, okay, so we always wanna be on that main storyline. So the other time we might be within another kind of clip that will stop us from exporting um, is in the multi clam clip. So if we come to the end of my timeline here, I'm just gonna hold down shift and tap Z. You can see I've got a multi-cam clip here. And basically, if I double click on this, I can see my multi-cam edit, I can make some modifications to that, I can do things like some color correction, or I can modify the audio levels and that type of thing. So I can make adjustments to my multi-cam that are gonna kind of flow through the rest of the timeline. However, if I come up to file and go to share, you can see all my options are grayed out here. If we want to export out from the multicam clip, um, actually in my version of Final Cut Pro, I'm not sure if this is the same for every version of Final Cut Pro, if I come up to the share panel up here, those same options are active. So I can export out from my multicam clip. You can see it's kind of a little bit black because of the offset of the clips at the beginning here. And it will export out that one minute of multicam edit that I've got. Uh, you can see I've got some other options in here as well. Um, so I can export out my, my multicam clip and it will export out uh, this gray movie here. So if I highlight this one gray and now go to share a master file, it's switched to the other angle. So basically I'm exporting out that bottom angle there. There's no black at the beginning um, because I'm not exporting out that angle. So I can jump between my different multicam clips here. But normally we wouldn't be exporting out from multicam anyway. So again, we're looking for this white arrow to go back to our main edit. Or if we come up to our list of projects here, we can double click on our edit and bring that main timeline back up. So again, if you're in a multicam edit, then you won't be able to export out your full edit um, as you would be able to from the main timeline. I haven't made any edits to my multicam here for this particular example. It's just an unedited multicam clip. So let's have a look at a couple of other areas where we might be exporting out not the entire timeline. So if I come here in my timeline and press X, it allows me to select that particular clip. So it's selecting a range of that clip. Um, and also with the range selection tool, if I drag across multiple clips, it's selecting this range. And this range actually highlights an area of the clip that we might want to make modifications to. It's particularly useful for modifying audio levels and that type of thing. Um, so you can see I can kind of keyframe dips in my audio or 
raise up my audio within that range. But also if I have a range selected, you want to keep an eye out for this, and I go to the share option and master file, then you can see that it's not exporting out that whole one minute of edit. It's only exporting out five seconds. So it's basically exporting out the range that I have selected, um, which can be useful. So if you want to send a client a preview of a short section of your video, uh, then you can do that. Or sometimes if I'm just exporting out the intro to my tutorial, I will uh, grab the range selection tool and set the range to kind of export that out. Sometimes I do longer tutorials uh, for sites like Skillshare, and I'll do the whole kind of set of sections in one edit. I'll mark areas of the edit with markers, and then I'll export out ranges of that um, between those markers. So we'll cancel out of this, but basically we're exporting out this selection here. If you are a shortcut uh, person like me, so I'm going to use Command and Plus to zoom in here, and you use the I and O keys to mark out selections, then there is a chance, um, and it's this isn't something that normally happens in Final Cut Pro, but if we go to share now, having tapped I and O quickly, and master file, you'll see that I'm just exporting out one frame of my edit, um, because I have that in and out point um, selected there. So just like the range selection tool, we can move our playhead to a certain point, press I, play through, press O, and that range uh, can be useful for making adjustments. It can also be useful if we want to add things like the default title, so Control and T for adding the default basic title within that range. Um, but also when we come to export out, um, we're only exporting out, again, that short section of the footage. So it's something to keep an eye out for in your edits to make sure that you're kind of clear on what is selected and what is not selected. If you use the shortcut Shift, Command, and Tap A, it will deselect everything. So that's always a useful one to use, particularly if you have a range selected and then you've scrubbed down to a different part of your timeline. I can't see there's a range selected, so Shift, Command, and A will deselect that. In fact, I can see there's a range selected, but it's just this 1.25, uh, one second and 25 frames here that's highlighting that I have that area selected. But if I do Shift, Command, and A, you'll see that will disappear because I now don't have a range selected. So I'll tap Shift and Z again just to zoom back to the timeline. So the range selection tool is one time when uh, you may have selected either a clip or a range um, of your timeline using the range selection tool um, to actually make edits but then you'll want to jump back to the selection tool and we can also deselect if we have a range marked out by just clicking away uh, in the gray area as well. So once we have our timeline selected and we've deselected the range, um, now we're going to have a look at some of the other problems that might pop up as we're trying to export from Final Cut Pro 10. So one of the main things that I see popping up when people are trying to export out, especially larger projects from Final Cut Pro 10, is that their hard drive is full. So really, when you're going to share and you're sharing your master file, so your main edit, um, check all your settings, check those are all good. And then once you've done that, if you press next, it's going to ask you where you want to share it. And if we press save and our export begins to happen, um, but it always stops at a certain point, then normally we have one of two problems um, to, to kind of figure out. One is um, whether our hard drive is full. So if we come to our finder, so the finder is the, the smiley face here, and it's basically where everything is stored. Normally your Final Cut Pro projects on your hard drive or your main hard drive Will be stored in the movies folder that's the kind of default location where final cut pro puts things um, and if you are working on a laptop or a desktop machine um, where you've had a solid state drive installed and stuff like that sometimes those older solid state drives are quite small and can fill up quite quickly so a 250 gigabyte drive with a couple of big projects um, can fill up super quickly um, so there's two things to do there one is to begin working externally um, on external hard drive to kind of add space to your Mac. Uh, and I left some links below to hard drives that I'd uh, recommend using, um, a couple of solid state drives. But 
Also, um, as well as exporting out to an external drive or working from an external drive, you want to know how to measure how much space is left on your computer. So if I do Shift, Command and C, it's going to take me to my computer. And I am on the, the list view here, or I could be on the thumbnail view. The list view is quite nice um, because it shows me the size of these drives. Okay. So you can see this Santa Catalina is 1.68 terabytes. If I go to File and Get Info or Command and I, it will show me how much space is available on that hard drive. So in this case, 244.13 gigabytes um, of 1.92 terabytes. So this is showing me how much is stored on that drive. And again, with other drives, if I go to my Macintosh HD here, I can do Command and I, and it will show me how much is available on my hard drive and also how much is used. So it's a one terabyte drive and I have 123 gigabytes left really. I should have about 20% of that drive available uh, for use to kind of keep things moving smoothly and to make sure um, I don't run into any trouble storing stuff. So I can close that. So that's one way to kind of see what's on your hard drive. The problem comes when we want to be able to clear stuff up um, from our hard drive. So if we're always exporting something out and we've maybe only got a few gigabytes left um, on our hard drive, then even a five or 10 minute project might be coming out at a few gigabytes of file size. We can plug in a drive temporarily to export out to. Um, so exporting out to a USB stick may not be the best idea to edit from a USB stick, but if it's giving you that extra space to export to, that may be one kind of quick solution um, for you. Uh, the other option um, will be to kind of clear up our drive and try and delete some space. So I've done some videos on how to kind of clean out your uh, Final Cut Pro project. We're not gonna go into super detail on that, um, but basically if you go to a program like Daisy Disk, and there's also another program called Final Cut Manager by Arctic Whiteness um, that will basically measure, in Final Cut Manager's case, it will measure specifically the Final Cut Pro projects on your hard drive. So if you know you're working on a lot of Final Cut Pro projects, then that's a good app to use. I like to use uh, Daisy Disk. Um, if I go to Santa Catalina, which is my kind of main storage drive. So you can see this measures uh, the different parts of my hard drive. And if I hover over, for instance, my tutorials here, you can see that once I click on that, the biggest kind of space hog on my computer, you can see that in here I've got 622 gigabytes of storage overall. And this is the largest one, these Final Cut Pro tutorials. Um, and if I have a look in here, in this orange one, we can start to figure out which projects are taking up maybe more space than they need to. And I could also go in and some of these are older projects. So I could just keep the exported version um, once I get past a certain point. So you'll need to figure out yourselves kind of where you delete stuff, but an application like Daisy Disk can be useful to kind of uh, find out where space is taken up. And then if we come in here, we could see I've got this split screen revision one and split screen revision two. I can drag this now down to my files to be deleted. So I've collected 17 gigabytes. I've got my intros here. I've got my some re-recorded stuff. And if I go to my intro, I've got my intro files here as well. So once we're, we've decided that we've kind of cleared this out correctly, we can press delete and that will give us a little warning, say delete these files forever and away they go. So those files are deleted. So now I've cleared 17 gigabytes of, of disk space from just deleting one um, exported file. So clearing hard drive space and making sure you've normally got at least 20% of your hard drive free. So for a 250 gigabyte hard drive, that would mean somewhere around uh, 50 gigabytes of space free, give or take, um, and so on and so forth. So you can kind of figure that out. So going back to Final Cut Pro, uh, the last thing we'll look at here is how to kind of troubleshoot exports when there's no other explanation for them. And the way that I like to use if my project is partially exporting is to kind of break it down into different sections. So basically if I have a project here, so this is a 
short project, but it could be any length and you can kind of use this method. Um, basically what I'll do is I will grab a marker here. So I'll put a marker in the middle. I'll call this midpoint, okay? And basically, um, if I'm having trouble exporting my project or if there's a glitch showing up at some point in my export, I will use the range selection tool that we talked about before to mark an in point at the beginning and an out point at this marker. And then I will export out half the, the video. So now with that range selected, I can go to share and master file and basically export out this first half of my video. Okay, so I can go through next and select where it's gonna save and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna cancel this. And if that exports out okay, then I'll press in at the midpoint and O at the out point. And then I'll export out that second half. And hopefully um, one of those halves will have the same glitch in it. And then as I kind of find out where that glitch is, I will add another marker, set another in and out point and export out this portion of the video and see if there's any glitches there. And then if there aren't, I will export out the end. And gradually I'm basically zooming in on the area of my timeline that may have a problem. So basically, if we gradually figure out that the glitch is in this part of the edit, we might look at any titles, for instance, that are on top there, any plugins that we're using um, within that edit and that type of thing to find out within the portion of the video that won't export once we've kind of gone through splitting it into half and then into half again for the bit that won't export. We can find out where our export problem is um, and hopefully remedy it or remove the plugin uh, from that portion of the video um, if we can kind of work around it in some way. So that's one way um, that I will kind of try and find the problem. Solving the problem is a different matter. It could be a plugin issue, it could be an upgrade issue, and there's a lot of people having trouble with there's a lot of people having trouble with Final Cut Pro and Catalina at the moment. Um, and you may find where the problem is in your video, but you may need to kind of dig a little deeper to actually solve that problem. But maybe you can also kind of edit around it if the, the project is on a rush deadline. So there's a few ways in which I troubleshoot uh, exporting out of Final Cut Pro, kind of making sure I understand the interface, how to identify that I'm on the main timeline uh, by looking at the title here, by making sure I've double clicked on my project edit up here with the little clapperboard icon at the top or specific clips on your timeline or if you're inside a compound clip or a multicam edit. Those can cause problems when you're trying to do your final export. So hopefully this tutorial is useful. If you have any questions um, about Final Cut Pro, then please do leave them below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.